Que pasa, amigos? It is good to see y'all. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday. It is December 5th. Now, we're going to do what we always do on this show. We're going to focus in on some hot OTC and penny stocks. Stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And we're primarily looking for those stocks that have potential to make us money. That's why we call them hot OTC and penny stocks. Now, I find most of my hot penny stocks looking at the charts. I think it's easier to see heat in the chart than it is to see it in the news. Definitely a lot faster. So if I see a lot of volume coming in or a breakout set up, that's heat. When I find a chart that has heat, then I'll go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings, looking for a catalyst to either spark up that chart or to keep it burning. When I find a hot piece of news and I got a hot chart, I got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I'm sharing with you regularly. Well, I've got a few for you today. First one we're going to take a look at is Wallbox, ticker WBX. Her chart, it's a perfect atypical breakout chart. Has everything going for it. The last two to three days, she has been breaking out, going over the 200. Her volume has been getting stronger. Technicals are very strong. The only problem I see with the chart is that it didn't start running earlier. This company has had a lot of big news over the last 30 days, juicy news, deals that they're making around the world, and yet the stock is just now starting to run. I think we could see a catch-up run. Now that it's breaking out, no jokes about catch-up. So WBX finished today at $1.95 with almost 11% gains. This hot penny stock is trading on the major exchanges, the New York Stock Exchange, so you're going to be able to trade this for free. There are no transaction fees trading major exchange stocks. And you get the benefit of trading pre-market, after-market as well. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what is Wallbox all about? Well, they tell us over here that Wallbox is a global technology company dedicated to changing the way the world uses energy. Wallbox creates advanced electric vehicle charging and energy management systems that give users the power to control their consumption save money, and live more sustainably. Wallbox offers a complete portfolio of charging and energy management solutions for residential, semi-public, and public uses in more than 100 countries around the world. The company was founded in 2015 in Barcelona, where the company has headquarters. They also have other offices in Europe, Asia, and America. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Nice jump. Looks like about over 300% going from 800,000 shares a day up to almost 3 million shares today. Share structure for WBX. They don't give us a lot of information here. Outstanding share count is just under 150 million. We don't know what the float is. It could be up to 150 million or it could be considerably less. We could have a low float. Your guess is as good as mine. Market cap for the company, about $261 million. Taking a look at the financials, well, they are making money and it's growing at a nice clip, isn't it? 2019, they were at $9 million. We know that's millions and not thousands because we've got three zeros up here. We could put behind any of the numbers on any of these charts. 2020, more than doubling that to $24 million quadrupling that virtually to 81 million in 2021 and almost doubling that in 2022 to 153 million. Oh, and look at the profits. It's exactly their revenues. They're not paying anything for any of the money they're making. I like that sort of profits. Quarterly, ah, being on the New York Stock Exchange, we're not going to get the quarterlies over here, but I do believe we get a balance sheet. Yes, we do. Cash and cash equivalents, they got about $88 million in the bank, $89 million. Total assets, about $450 million. Total liabilities, $269. Do the math there, what you end up with is stockholder equity. This is for us. This is where we get our shareholder value. This is what makes the price what it is. $180 million. You're asking how? Go take the outstanding share count, what was it, uh, 150 million roughly, and divide that into this, and that will give you roughly what the price of the stock should be based on equity. Taking a look at the disclosures, 
Uh, we don't have anything here but the six. And I do believe the six is in the news. And we're going to cover that there. It's just easier to read. So let's jump on over to that news now. Now, I told you the company's got a lot of hot, juicy news just in the last 30 days. So that's primarily what we're going to look at. Though there was one piece of news dangling out there from October we can't ignore. Wallbox announces acquisition of ABL, a leading EV charging provider in Europe. And I'll be honest, I have not dived into that. I just saw it here. But I've got five pieces of news here that I have dove into. These are all over the last 30 days, and I want to share little bits from each one of them with you. These are all deals that they have made, every single one of them. Wallbox and Osprey partner to expand reliable public charging in the UK. Osprey is one of UK's largest and leading EV charging networks. Initially, this agreement is going to begin with the installation of 125 of Wallbox's Supernova DC rapid chargers. And each one of these units can eliminate up to 60 tons of CO2 in their life cycle. That next deal is with Sonpar the world's largest electrical distribution network. They tell us here that the company is accelerating its partnership with Sonpar by closing their ninth local partnership with Electroscandia Severgi, a Sonpar company. Sonpar is the world's leading business-to-business -business distributor of electrical products, solutions, and related services with a footprint spanning 40 countries. Sonpar and Wallbox have been together since 2022, and since getting together, they've expanded out into the USA, Spain, Italy, Switzerland, France, Canada, Austria, and the Netherlands. The next deal, Wallbox and Alante joined forces to deploy the largest EV fast charging network in Southern Europe. Now, this is a hot, hot piece of news. Alante which recently was selected to receive about 50 million euro, which is a grant from the EU, aims to install 5,000 fast charging points by 2025 and over 35,000 by 2030, covering Spain, Italy, France, and Portugal. Alanti has chosen Wallbox as a preferred partner in the project due to their production capacity and global leadership in the manufacturing of super fast chargers for EV. Folks, did you catch that? Alante has gotten a 50 million euro grant to do this and they have chosen Wallbox as their preferred partner. The money is going to come rolling in. And we got one more deal. This news press came out December 4th. Generic and Wallbox announced strategic investment and a commercial agreement. The industry leaders will bring energy solutions to the global market, including a new bi-directional DC EV charger for the home. It appears that Generic Power Systems has made an investment into Wallbox, and I wasn't able to actually see how much they invested. I did look around, I just couldn't find it. What I do see here is that Generic is getting a seat on Wallbox's board of directors, and there's a commercial agreement between the two companies where Generic is going to sell the products of Wallbox to their residential and commercial customers. And they're going to do this through their 8,700 dealerships across the USA. Now, they tell us they are going to be focusing on businesses with public access, such as supermarkets, shopping centers, restaurants. This is going to provide access to reliable DC fast chargers that can add up to 100 miles to an EV in just 10 minutes. Now, this is probably great for business, but I'm not real excited about it. Not here in the U.S. And I'll tell you why, folks. When I went over to the U.K., I was there for 10 years. They don't have any telephone poles. There's no lines hanging on all these pieces of wood up in the air. It looks cleaner. It doesn't look tacky. Now we're going to have all these charging units and parking lots up and down our streets. They're going to be everywhere. Are they all going to be taken care of? Are they all going to be hooked up and hanging right? I just think it's going to start looking messy and tacky. But in either case... Now, the last thing I want to show you here, this is a company on the New York Stock Exchange that is working now with this company and made their investment. It's not a little company. They have a market cap of $7.5 billion, and their stock right now is going for $122 a share, if that means anything to you.
So it looks to me like the company's making a lot of deals. They're making a lot of money. You see it pouring in and the chart is hot. It's ready to break out right now. We're going to take a look now at ticker WBX wall box. We're going to chart this stock and all the other stocks on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. This is a six month, four hour view. We've got a high for wall box back in July of $5.37 and then a real hard drawn out fall to a 52 week low of $1.24, which she hit in November. Now, as you can see, she's been on a downtrend for a long time. It's only been the last three, four days that she has started pushing up. She has ignored all of this good news, even hitting this 52 week low. She just kind of came back up and went sideways in the same zone. No enthusiasm. Why now? Why is she breaking out now? So she has been pushing up. She started here at $1.45, went up to $2.14 and has fallen back to two bucks. But you can see that is steady growth. Volume has gotten strong just these last couple of days. And our oscillators, all of them are on fire and going to the moon right now. Every single one of them is pushing up high. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So there's our low bubble, $1.24. She jumped off of that, working to get on top of the 50. You can see she had some big, strong bounces, trying to stay up. Then she pushed herself up onto the 200. 200 is falling, so she's struggling to get up on top of it. Once the 200 got flat, you can see this, folks. When did she break out? When she got flat. This is when we look for our breakout opportunities. When the 200 finally gets level, it's not slippery. It's not going to keep falling off of it. Boom! Jumps up on it comes down, gets a good pounce, and boink, she's running. As I said, she jumped here from $1.45 up to $2.14 before falling back to two, and she is floating on that nine-day SMA. You can see how tight she is hanging to it. All of our SMAs are curved up and climbing right now, evenly spaced, looking nice. Our oscillators, PPO, percentage price oscillator, is climbing strong. MACD is bouncing up the hill, but she is climbing. RSI had a tumble out of the overbought from 80 down to 63, but now it is right up under the overbought at 69 again. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. That's a nice chart. She's been growing all five days, going from a low bubble of $1.35. She got up on top of that 200, bounced off of it once and launched. She has pushed herself away from the 200, not even coming close to it anymore. She's getting lighter. Now she's hanging on to the 50-day SMA, and she is bouncing uphill. Oscillators, uh, they're a bit bobbly right now, kind of tough to read anything. They're all going sideways. But as I said, the last few days, our volume has been increasing. They've had lots of big news, lots of deals. You know the money's going to start rolling in. If it isn't from each one of the deals, it's got to at least be from Alante, which got that 50 million euro grant, and they asked this company to be their preferred partner. Come on, folks, do you need any more catalyst than that? We got a hot atypical breakout chart and all the news you could eat in a sitting. Come on, put WBX on your watch list. Our next hot penny stock also has a hot atypical breakout chart that it's breaking out of right now. This is ticker JNVR, Jan over Inc. She too has had a lot of good news over the last month, but the chart just hasn't been responding to it. Not until the news that came out yesterday. Today, her volume exploded. Jan over finished today at $1.62 with just over 37% gains. She too is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. So what does Jan over do? Well, they tell us here that Janover provides commercial property financing solutions. They operate a platform that connects commercial mortgage borrowers looking for debt to refinance or build, or maybe they want to buy commercial properties, including apartment buildings, with commercial property lenders, such as banks, credit unions, rights, debt funds, and others looking to deploy capital into commercial mortgages. So they are connecting buyers to lenders, and there's lots of money in that market. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh my God, explosive folks. That is over a hundred times her normal volume, jumping from 27,000 shares up to 2.8 million. That's a lot of extra shares and a lot of extra attention. 
Share structure for Hanover. We got ourselves a low float. Not that I know what it is, but I know anything under 10 million is a low float and our outstanding share count is only at 9.9 .9 million. Market cap for the company is just under 12 million. Financials for Janover. All right, 2020, they were at 1.5 million. 2021, almost 2 million. 2022, 2.1 million. So they're steadily and slowly growing. But what's impressive here is because they have a digital product, they're not paying anything for the money they're making. That's what I'm presuming. Taking a look at the quarterly, still, they're not paying anything for the money they're making. And they're doing an average of about six to 700,000 every quarter. Steady. Taking a look at their balance sheet, cash and cash equivalents, the money in the bank. They got about 1.5 million. Total assets here is about 2 million. Total liabilities just under a million. So again, we've got positive stockholder equity of 1.1 million. Yes. Looking at those disclosures. All right, I did dive into these. These Form 4s are filed whenever insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. These are buys and sells, which is really what we're interested in. But they're we. I mean, they're really tiny. A couple hundred sold, a couple hundred bought. No big deal. And then this 8K has got something to do with management compensation. So we're not going to jump into that either. So let's just jump on over to that news. So we've got lots of news here, and I'm not going to dive into all of it, just a couple of them, but I want to give you a flavor of what is going on. We are back here at October 26th. The company achieved significant growth and engagement from top credit unions within its fintech marketplace. The company and exchange loans announced strategic partnership to capitalize on market dislocations. The company enters into a strategic referral partnership with La Rosa Holdings. Uh, here, halfway through November, the company announced a share repurchase program. They plan on buying back $1 million worth of shares. At the current price, that would be something like 750,000 shares. Yeah, 750,000 shares. And then I do want to look at these two pieces of news. Both of these came out here recently, one November 20th and one December 4th, the big news. So the one that came out November 20th, Janover acquires Groundbreaker, a profitable software-as-a-service platform establishing a comprehensive marketplace for commercial real estate. The company today announced that it has acquired Groundbreaker Technologies, a profitable software-as-a-service platform for commercial property professionals. Groundbreaker is a specialized software-as-a-service platform designed to simplify capital fundraising and invest investment administration in the commercial real estate industry. The platform also facilitates secure financial transactions and offers robust customer relationship management tools aiming to enhance transparency and engagement between property developers and investors. The acquisition transitions more than 10% of our revenue to predictable, reoccurring contractual subscription revenue. So they're going to make money with their money. <laughs> and the big news that got the charts running. Janover launches its first AI chatbot software as a service model and offers licensing to select commercial lenders so that they can use this AI platform. They tell us here their first collaboration is with Gelt Financial. The company today announced that it is now offering its AI chatbot interface under a software as a service model to a select number of commercial lenders. The first collaboration is with Gelt Financial, a leading and innovating commercial real estate lender providing debt to real estate owners across the U.S. Hanover has named their AI Burrito as each conversation ought to be unique and delicious. <laughs> okay. So they've got themselves their first AI chat software as a service model that they're going to license out to other lenders who are going to be able to use this and make money. Now, I don't know how much money they're going to make off of it. All I know is real estate is a big ticket item. There's a lot of money that floats around selling real estate. So I anticipate the company's probably going to be making a lot of money. And are they going to have to pay anything for that money? 
I don't know. All right, enough said. Let's go look at that chart. We're now taking a look at Janover, ticker JNVR. That's a six-month, four-hour view, and it's actually the whole chart. This company came on the market July 25th when she hit her high of $5.50, and then she fell away down to this all-time low she hit in November of $0.70. Cents. Now, we had a lot of volume back here, and we've had a little volume in the middle, and we've had some volume today. <laughs> there just hasn't been any volume to talk about. But off of that low bubble, she started to make her move. She jumped from 70 cents up to a buck seven, fell back, landed on the 50, and then jumped onto that nine. And look at her, just working that nine day, crossing the 200, nice and easy, nothing going on. And then all of a sudden today, with all the volume, we get these huge green bars, nice big jumps, and she's still climbing after market. Osculators are strong. PPO is climbing up. MACD is climbing with green bars accumulating. And our RSI is in the overbought and on fire. 20-day, one-hour view. So our low bubble, 70 cents, trying to get over that 200. Once she got over it, she bounced off her 50, got a good footing on that 200, and launched herself. Now she's bouncing off the 50 as she's climbing, and our bars are getting bigger. After market, we've got lots of pushing up. All of our SMAs are grand. They're all turned up. Osculators are all turned up as well. Everything looks good on the one-hour chart. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. Well, she has been climbing, hasn't she? Five days ago, we were at 90 cents, just barely under the 200. Got over that 200, jumped, started bouncing on the 20, and she is working her way across the screen. Now, she's getting a little volatile here. She broke all of her SMAs to get down to this 200, bounced off of that with a big jump, came down to the 200 again with a bigger jump behind that. Now she's come down and done a rubber ball bounce on the 200. You know what a rubber ball does in the water? It goes under the water and as soon as it comes out, it jumps quick. That's what we got here. She was under the 200, came up on top and jumped right up onto that 50, came down to the 20 and she's really working, trying to get back up. I like this chart, believe it or not. Our osculators, well, they're showing a little bit of recovery right now. We had a big jump up, a big turn down, and right now everything has gone flat except for our RSI, which is climbing. I'm liking it, folks. She's had a lot of good news, too. She just wasn't moving on it. Now this piece of news comes out, AI, right? <laughs> and she runs. So I would at least put this on my chart with all the volume that came in today. We've got to see what happens tomorrow. JNVR. Watch it. Last stock we're taking a look at also comes from the major exchange, the NASDAQ. This is the Oatly Group, ticker O-T-L-Y. Now, we're a little late to the party here. She did have an atypical breakout chart about 20 days ago, and she broke out, and she's been climbing ever since. 20 days of running. Now, she hasn't had any news in the last couple of days or the last week, but she has had recent news, and it's big news. I think there's still heat to be had here. So, Oatly finished today at $1.21 with just over 15% gains. So, what is it exactly that Oatly does? They tell us here, we are the world's original and largest oat drink company. For over 25 years, we have exclusively focused on developing expertise around oats a global power crop with inherent properties suited for sustainability and human health. Our commitment to oats has resulted in core technical advancements that enabled us to unlock the breadth of the dairy portfolio, including alternatives to milks, ice cream, yogurt, cooking cream, spreads, and on-the-go drinks. Headquartered in Malmo, Sweden, the Oatly brand is available in more than 20 countries globally. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, we've got a nice jump going from 5.8 million up to 8.5 million. Share structure, they don't give us a lot of information. Geez, the only information they give us here is the outstanding share count. We don't even get a market cap. Normally, I always get a market cap. Our outstanding share count is 592 million. Our float can be anywhere up to that or anywhere below that. 
And to figure out our market cap, all we'd have to do is take those outstanding shares and multiply them time that price. And it looks to me like we'd be somewhere around 800 million for our market cap. Taking a look at the financials for the company. Oh, they're making good revenues. They've been growing strong too. 2019, they were at 204 million. At the end of 2022, they were at almost three quarter billion, getting to keep about 80 million of that. Looking at their quarterlies, I don't know why we've got some missing here and the most recent one only goes up to 2022. Take a look at that balance sheet. Cash and cash equivalents, they've got about 83 million. Looks like about 120 million is owed to them. They got about 115 million in inventory. Add up all those assets together, they got total of 1.2 billion in assets. Total liabilities is under a half a billion, which leaves us stockholder equity woo of 791 million. Fantastic. Checking out the disclosures for Oatly. Now we do have some recent filings over here. We've got two 6Ks, which have to do with the financials. We've got an SC13G. This is whenever a new investor comes in and buys enough shares, they actually qualify to own a percentage of the company. This guy now owns about 5% of the company. And then we've got another 6K. This is a notification from the NASDAQ. They've told the company that they're not meeting the minimum bid price requirement on the NASDAQ of $1. These companies cannot go under a dollar for too long or they'll be kicked off the major exchange down to the OTC. Now they've been given a warning, not a deadline. They've been told they've got to get their price up over a dollar. Close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. They do that, they're out of hot water. And right now they are just starting to do that. I think we got one or two days that they've been over a dollar. If they can keep that up, no problems. Let's go take a look at that news now. Now, as I said, we don't have any news in the last couple of days, but we do have a couple of pieces here that are real important. One came out in October and one came out in November. The one that came out in October, Oatly Group today announced that one of Germany's largest coffee chains, Coffee Fellows, will make Oatly Barista available in 275 of its locations across Germany, Austria, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. Coffee Fellows customers can now enjoy all of its coffee specialties dairy-free at no extra charge. Now, this new company tells us that they process around 1.3 million liters of cow milk into coffee specialties every year. And through their cooperation with Oatly, they would like to change that, and they're now aiming to double their sales for the year of 2024. That other piece of news that came out in November, the company, the world's original and largest oat drink company, today announced a new food service distribution arrangement in the United States with Insomnia Cookies, the beloved brand known for serving warm cookies all day and late into the night. Available at all 250 plus locations throughout the U.S., Oatly's 11 ounce original and chocolate oat milks are now being offered. What a deal. I mean, it's perfect. This goes together like milk and cookies. <laughs> So you've got them expanding over there in Germany, in Europe. You got them expanding over here in the U.S. They just made two deals. This is all it takes, folks. All we need is some catalyst when you've got a hot chart. And this chart is hot. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We're looking at Oatly, ticker O-T-L-Y, the Oatly Group. We're looking at a six-month, four-hour view. About six months ago in March, we had our high of $2.71. She started to fall hard, had a breakout here when our 200 day got level, right? She broke out and then for some oddball reason crashed through the 200 and she's fallen all the way down here to a low of 44 cents. Now you can see the volume is pretty steady, though it is getting a little stronger in this area. She bounced off of that low bubble, got up on top of that 50, negotiated, and then took a strong surge up on top of this 200. Bounced off that 200, and she has taken off. And look at all of our SMAs. They're virtually straight lines going up right now. Looks very determined. And our 200-day SMA is just now turning up. Our oscillators are all strong. All of them are pushing up and actually getting stronger with their inclines. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So we were above the 200, came underneath hitting this low, 
She came back on top of her 200 and jumped away from it with a lot of fervor. Just pushed herself hard. Has not come back to the 200 cents. She has been negotiating with the 50-day SMA as she's climbing. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down to this low bubble and I'm going to put in a regression channel. All you got to do is tag one day, tag the other day, and it lays it in there for you perfectly. So, I am looking to see if she's ready to come out of this channel, down or up. Well, she's very close. She got up to the top here. You can see she's hit her head on it a few times. Each time she hits her head on it, she comes back down to the center area, the 50-day SMA, renegotiates and tries to jump again. Right now, she has pulled back. We've got a red bar, though she's still over the 9-day SMA. You might want to expect it to come down to the halfway point, maybe even the 20, getting another bounce trying to push up. Our oscillators, they're strong, but they're cooling off. Just that little bit of sideways activity and that one red bar is starting to cool things down. Five day, five minute. So we were outside of our channel here, right on top of the 200. Came inside of it. She got over top of the 200 and the 50% mark of our channel and then lost footing. Crashed down hard, got close to the bottom of the channel, and you can see... It is the center of this channel she's having a hard time getting through. She finally got through it, got close to the top of the channel, has pulled back, and is going sideways right now. And there is a strong likelihood that she could come back down to the 200 and this center line, getting a push off and a launch. That's what we're going to watch for. The fall down to about a dollar twelve, maybe a dollar ten. Although it's all going to be moving tomorrow when the bell rings. Our oscillators are pretty weak right now. Everything, PPO, MACD, all pushing down. RSI has been falling. She's down at 46 right now. So on our short chart, it doesn't look that great. But on the long chart, she looks hot. You can see she's running hard. I can see her. Well, she's right there right now. That is a resistance that she is at right here. That is at $1.22. We're at $1.21. The next one should be somewhere around $1.34. And then you might be able to jump up to a buck fifty-seven. So that's what I'd be looking for, folks, if I had it on my watch list. You're going to put it on your watch list? I'll tell you what. Before you do, go do some more due diligence. Not just on Oatly, but the others as well. You know, folks, I don't cover all the information. And all of it is important. And you never know what I might have missed. You know what I say. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.